new videos every day. When you were a child, did your parents ever punish you for doing something wrong? Well, what would you think if I told you that that spanking, timeout, or grounding you received was actually a form of behavior modification implemented by your parents? That's not such a hard relationship to see, right? Well, what would you think if I told you that the general scientific community thinks that there's no difference between you as a misbehaving child and, let's say, an untrained dog? What do you think about that? Well, have you ever seen a clockwork orange? This is Kaylee, and today we're going to be discussing aversion therapy. So, is there really a difference between a misbehaving child and an untrained pet? Are humans really animals? Well, it depends on who you ask. According to Darwin's theory, you know, we're mammals, homo sapien, and we are the end mutation from ape into the creature that's sitting on the other end of that screen processing my words right now. And this is taught all the way down into grade school. The human animal. That's what we are, right? Well, personally, I think there's a huge difference in the cognitive reasoning of a human being than that of, say, a dog, a pigeon, a rat, even apes, you know, our modern-day test subjects. Unfortunately, scientists and psychiatrists hold true to this human-animal theory. And it is from that that behavior therapy and aversion therapy were born. Now, behavior therapy is essentially taking a desirable behavior and subbing it for an undesirable one. Let's talk about for a moment B.F. Skinner. It was his theory on radical behaviorism that led to behavior therapy and aversion therapy as we know it today. His internationally studied uh, Skinner boxes were used on various test subjects including rats, pigeons, and even his own daughter for a few years. Um, and basically what he would do is he would put these things in a box and condition them to the point that they would do a desired task like push a button and then they would be rewarded with food or a prize. Now that's about as far as I'm going to get into Skinner and his boxes, but this radical behaviorism and theory of conditioning a creature to make it do something that you want it to do, well, that's going to take us down to aversion therapy, which is a step beyond regular behavior therapy. So what is aversion therapy? Well, aversion therapy is a type of behavior therapy designed to modify antisocial habits or addictions by creating a strong association with a disagreeable or painful stimulus. That's the official definition out of the American Medical Heritage Dictionary. Well, before I go into aversion therapy and some of its uses today and historically, I do have to say that out of the general treatment uh, setting, aversion therapy does have some good uses. Let's say, for instance, you're a little kid and you put your hand without any protection on a hot oven rack. Well, it's going to hurt like hell, and you're going to remember not to put your hand on a hot oven rack again without, say, oh, an oven mitt. And it only takes one time for that particular memory to be ingrained in you. Now, what would you think if your parents made you repeat that same task over and over and over again? Turning the oven on, making you grab it. Turning the oven on, making you grab it. Instilling that painful reaction day after day after day just to make sure that you got the message. This is basically what aversion therapy does. So what is aversion therapy used for in a treatment setting? Well, one example is the Schick Shadel Hospital in Washington. It's um, publicly renowned for its use of aversion therapy in emmentine and phoratic forms, which by that I mean using drugs to induce vomiting and severe vomiting, not just your regular old bleh, <laughs> and also electroshock therapy to cure drug and alcohol addictions. Now, I peruse the website with all its bright colors and smiling faces and feel-good stories, and, you know, the way that they presented it, it didn't seem to be all that bad. They didn't really go into detail. Well, then I did a search for reviews of the hospital from former patients. Now, while most of these former patients claim to be free from their urges to do drugs or drink again, while still having numerous life problems, they use the word 
torture to describe their experience there. And this wasn't just a one-time occurrence. I came across the word torture numerous times in these reviews. Now, that's kind of an interesting word to use when describing your therapy, don't you think? Now, the Schick Shadel Hospital is just one example of using aversion therapy in modern day treatment facilities. Others are things like the Mayo Clinic in Florida, which uses aversion therapy through drugs to induce vomiting for people to quit smoking, which I personally think is interesting. You want to throw up and be adverse to cigarettes, so you can pay thousands of dollars to go to a treatment facility where they will essentially torture you so that you'll quit. Now, one of the most famous historical uses for aversion therapy was its use to cure homosexuality. Now, back in the 50s and 60s, before homosexuality was decriminalized in the United States and taken out of the Diagnostic Statistical Manual with the DSM, which is the Psychiatry Bible, as a disorder, um, aversion therapy was used to try and cure these deviant, obviously disturbed peoples of their antisocial behavior and urges. Brigham Young University in Utah actually used electroshock aversion therapy to try and wipe out the homosexual epidemic, as they called it, in the community. This, however, died out supposedly in the late 1970s as it became publicly unfavorable. Now across the pond, English disc jockey Peter Price's story of his uh, exposure to aversion therapy in the 1960s is worth noting. He was sent to a treatment facility after coming out to his parents um, to try and cure him of this demon of homosexuality. And in a BBC News article, he was quoted as saying, for 72 hours I lay in my own excrement and dirt, scared out of my wits. I begged to be let out of the hospital after the psychiatrist told me the next stage of treatment involved attaching electrodes to my penis. Now, he was eventually let out of the facility, and he went on to say that after a few months, he, um, you know, accepted the fact that he was gay and went on to live his life. However, strangely enough, his same psychiatrist from the treatment facility, well, they ran into each other at a gay bar about six months down the road. Naturally, Price was a little bit angry and he went after him with a broken beer bottle. Not the best way to handle it, but I can't say that I would do it any different. Another modern day use of aversion therapy is actually going on in our criminal system right now as treatment to cure sex offenders. Now with this type of aversion therapy, what happens is um, doctors in the jails go in and they use a device called the penile plasmograph or PPG and that's used to measure blood flow to the penis um, when someone becomes sexually aroused by certain stimuli. Let's say, for instance, a picture of a young woman or a child. And they have these devices for women as well. Um, and then usually what happens after they measure blood flow and subsequently arousal, shock treatment is used to try and stave off this arousal. Now, the funny thing is, is that most of the reports I came across said that this is a great device and use of therapy to predict whether or not sex offenders will act again, but there was no mention of a cure. Now, if you personally had an undesirable or socially unacceptable behavior that you acted on a lot, would you like to be sent to treatment to uh, be exposed to aversion therapy to try and stave off your urges to do this bad, not normal thing? Well, whether or not you agree with aversion therapy and its uses, it doesn't really matter because essentially what these doctors are doing is conditioning people like animals, training them and their minds to do what they think is right. So what I'd like for you to do is leave me a comment and tell me what you think. Should human beings be trained much like a dog or does it not really matter? And aversion therapy is the way to go. I'd really like to know what you think. Um, also, if you could, please rate the video and don't forget to subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Were the founders of Western psychiatry communists? Well, join us in a future video when we'll compare communist goals from the early part of the 20th century, as well as the goals of the first 
World Federation on Mental Health. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control. So if you liked it, go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel.